Good morning. It is currently 4 a.m. and I am taking you along with me for a day in my life as a group fitness coach slash business owner. I am teaching class at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., and 6 p.m., hence why I'm up so early. I want to do my morning routine still, so I'm going to journal, I'm going to read, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go get it done. I just hope that you're able to find those windows of time where you can work on yourself a little bit, whether that's five minutes of reading or journaling or just waking up like 10 minutes before you're supposed to. And I totally understand that it's hard, especially if you have a family, if you have kids. I have no experience with kids obviously i do empathize with those who feel like there's not enough time in the day and who feel like their jobs consume them and the nine to five life is very rough and i recently just got out of the nine to five life i'm group fitness coaching now so the hours are a lot more reduced so i only am working 6 a.m 7 a.m 6 p.m today and so I'm very, very grateful for that and having that opportunity to allow that into my life because it was a huge struggle for me. I don't know. I just feel like I struggled a lot with limiting beliefs. Like, how am I going to get out of this 9 to 5? I'm not going to find a way. But then I did. And this is not the end goal by any means. I started my own business and... I want to grow it and expand it and I'm learning so much and in the meantime I'm working and trying to find time for myself in the midst of my responsibilities if that makes sense but yeah like I said I just recently quit my nine to five I was in the nine to five life actually it was 7 45 a.m. to 5 15 p.m and my commute was 45 minutes both ways and I really like felt like I was losing my mind and I don't want to sound tone deaf at all <laughs> like again I know that people have kids and they have a lot more responsibility than I'm a single girl in her 20s and like I'm privileged enough to have my rock bottom if worst comes to worst is my family accepted me with open arms to come move in with them while I figure out life. I don't want that to happen so I'm really I really am trying to grow my own career and become my own entrepreneur and learn like I said but anyways towards the end of my job I very much reached that point where I was like just so just so miserable and like suffering like every single day I would be driving 45 minutes and, and especially when I would hit traffic it would be a lot worse my mental state I hate not being able to have control over my time and feeling like I'm rushing like and I'm late and there's not enough time I'm like it's fucking 8 p.m and i haven't eaten yet and I, then i have to go to bed at 9. it's just like frustrating those are my 8 p.m thoughts after sitting in fucking like hours of traffic and i'm just like this is just such a sad life and for some people they like that stability of a nine to five they like that routine in that sense but i just didn't and i loved my job i loved the people i worked with it was just more about the lack of freedom and control over my own time it just i just couldn't <laughs> i don't know and so if you are in the same boat and you're there right now or you just don't really see an end i promise you like even when i talk to the girls that come to my class my training classes they're fully like in their 40s and 50s they have kids they're established in their career and then they are not happy with it but they don't think that there's a way out and i'll literally be there like brainstorming with them like how can you use what you know right now to freelance set 
your own rates and like help other people individually so you're not working under somebody so I don't know I just feel very passionate that everybody has the gift and the ability to develop their skills to a point where they can vouch for themselves and like freelance and make it work on their own if they're really if you're truly that ambitious and driven so yeah if you're in that boat please just don't feel like you're ever stuck somewhere there's always the ability to pivot and change careers and i would say a great place to start is finding people who are your inspiration like find the people that prove how you feel is not true like if you feel like it's too late to switch careers find a successful entrepreneur or somebody that you look up to who pivoted late in their career or find somebody who goes against society societal norms and made a name for themselves despite all the odds against them there's so many stories like that and i think a great place to start is documentaries autobiographies like reading them also oh my gosh why did i not think of this this book right here i am so freaking moved by this book it's called mastery and it's basically stories like an accumulation of stories of a bunch of people in history they have such different stories hearing people's stories is so inspiring to me they some of them started with nothing some of them were really smart but they just didn't feel passionate about their study or their family doubted them there's just so many stories and like the wright brothers are in here um a lot of these names i'm going to be honest i don't even know them but it was still so empowering i'm like yeah hell yeah if like it just encourages you to think outside the norm and challenge like your beliefs your limiting beliefs why do you feel like you're stuck in your career like who even said that and i think i'll just <laughs> let you read the rest on your own so i got this book at the beginning of the year and i've only not only but like i've read this part this bigger chunk and i have this much more to go and i started in january it's december so i'm in no rush to finish it i'm thoroughly enjoying it and like i make my notes and i take what i need from the pages and like find the windows of time when i can read and i'm not in a rush i don't feel like i need to finish it in a day or rush to read a hundred books this year you know so autobiographies documentaries and podcasts i really love alex hermosi i love uh tony robbins mel robbins it's a lot of people and with that i'm gonna journal <laughs> i'm gonna read a little bit and we're gonna be off i'll see you at the gym probably after my first class <laughs> gym i set up last night but i'm just gonna like set up a little bit more i have i think eight people in today's class today is upper body day i taught lower body yesterday and we do like a glue a glute burnout at the end i need to clean up a little bit because we had friends giving here so everything's kind of not organized and then today i'm like filming for girl gain so we're working on an exercise library and then I am going to speak for UC Irvine Girl Gains. So it's a busy day, but like fun busy. It's so fulfilling busy. What should I put today's quote as? Oh my gosh. <gasps> Wait, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. One second. I like to put cheesy quotes, okay? Because I don't know. I feel like people like quotes. Don't lose this moment searching for another. And today we're doing
Okay, well, I have one more. Okay. No, you can definitely get two more. Bro. No. Yes. I'm, it's hurting. It is what it is. It's hurting. I'm getting calluses. Okay. You don't care about calluses. <laughs> One more, one more, one more. Okay. She says, oh my god. Perfect. Oh, come on, do you need anymore? Hello. Let me hit this one. It is five, no, <clears throat> 423. My mind is so all over the place. Like, I feel like I've, I just need to chill and like, let me just turn off my laptop for a second. It is four. <laughs> this is just such an accurate represent representation of me right now. Just like, what is that? Anyways, I, what did I do today? I coached, I worked out, but I only did half of my workout because I was like, no, literally my stomach is grumbling, I can't. So, <clears throat> yeah, I, I only did two. I did a bench press and pull-ups. And then maybe I was thinking tonight I could just do the rest of my workout maybe i don't know or maybe i'll just add it to tomorrow's yeah i'll i'll let me do that but anyways um yeah and then i came home a worked on my laptop for like girl game stuff i called my friend and we were like just on facetime together doing work and then i made some tiki talks and now I'm sitting here. I have my Girl Gains UC Irvine speech at 5. I kind of want to insert like portions of my speech. That might be interesting. Okay. Honestly, I might just show my whole speech. Guys, I cannot stop thinking about the mac and cheese my friend made last night. I still have some in the fridge. And I'm going to eat that tonight. I'm so excited. And I listened to a podcast today. And I just feel good. Maybe I don't look good, but I feel good. I'm sorry. Okay, should I shower? I'm sitting. I have the heater on me. It's so cold. I'm going to shower. Opera, order of operation. Shower. Put on my girl jeans, crew neck. And do my hair maybe. And then get on the call. And then I'll record the call. Sounds good. See you. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth, the original founder of Girl Gains at San Diego State and then now the co-founder of National Girl Gains and I just wanted to take time today to kind of talk about the story of Girl Gains and how all of you kind of play a role in the story of it. So a little history lesson here before Girl Gains. Year is 2017. In 2017 I was 17 but growing up I was never the most confident one. I was never the funniest, the smartest, the prettiest by any means. And I was always comparing myself to like other people. When I had graduated from high school, I actually set out to like reinvent myself and I was so determined to become unrecognizable. So before entering college, I made a list of all the traits I wanted to have and a few of them were confidence. I wanted to have like my dream body and I also wanted to just be very outgoing, which, are, which were all the traits that I was lacking. But then on the very first day of going, of walking onto campus, this is SDSU, I remember all of that self-doubt came pouring in and I looked around and immediately noticed all the things that I was lacking. And the things that stood out the most to me were Lululemon leggings, ab definition and girlfriends like I was so confused how everyone already had a group of girls to go to class with and were already making friends super quickly I remember I made my dad drive me to the mall that instance and I bought my very first pair of Lululemon leggings which he did make me pay for myself the funny thing was right after buying those I wore them to school and I realized that oh, I didn't get the most recent pair of Lululemon leggings and I'm actually missing like all these other items from them. So that began my obsession with Lululemon leggings. However, they didn't solve any of my problems. That sort of self-doubt kind of just followed me around throughout my experience in college and that self-comparing. One day, I was scrolling on Twitter and in my dorm room and simultaneously just not talking to any of the girls on my floor. I really hadn't had found a girl squad yet. I was scrolling on Twitter and I stumbled upon a girl's 
booty transformation. I remember she had gone from skinny, which was me, to really fit and curvy. And I didn't even know that type of transformation was possible. And so in that moment, I was like, I think that weightlifting is going to be my new Lululemons. Like, this is the thing that's going to solve all of my problems. The next day, I remember I went into the weight room. The experience was not the the experience that I had imagined in my head like on on the internet I was like oh yeah weightlifting that's easy she did you know these specific lifts and that's what I'm going to do and this is the result I'm going to get but you walk into the gym and it's just all men and I remember feeling again that self-doubt came rushing in and I was like I I do not belong here I'm I'm not strong enough for this I stick out like a sore thumb I don't know what I'm doing so I went off to the um, treadmill instead. <laughs> it wasn't until I befriended a male bodybuilder and he was like, I'm going to show you how to lift weights and I want to help you like overcome that gym anxiety. And with him by my side, I felt, I honestly had like a little bit more confidence to go in there and it felt a lot less intimidating because I felt like I had the guidance there. And so I would go with him pretty religiously um, and he taught me a lot of the main lifts and taught me about like adding weight and really pushing yourself and through that I learned so much about myself and my potential and I gained so much confidence. I slowly like got more confident to be able to go into the weight room by myself and so confidence increased. I was feeling a lot better about myself physically and mentally and I noticed that carried over into other aspects of my life but there was still a huge problem in that I didn't really notice other girls in the weight room if any there was like maximum two I felt like I had all of this excitement around weightlifting but I had no girlfriends to share that excitement with I relied a lot on my online like youtubers like Whitney Simmons or Chrissy Chella obviously people who don't know who I am so it was a very one-sided dynamic there and then one day I discovered a female weightlifting gym in San Diego. Like, I didn't even know this type of environment existed so I messaged the owner the very first day. I will never forget it. I walked in and there's a girl named Dom and she's deadlifting in her bikini and I first thought that is one kind of strange but two kind of badass at the same time that she's confident enough and two she was deadlifting over three plates on each side for reps which I had never seen that level of, of strength before like not even among the guys in my at the gym. On top of that, there were a group of girls all cheering her on, encouraging her to PR. I remember thinking, why do they care that she PRs? Like, what that has nothing to do with them. But I think like that ultimately just explained the whole dynamic of this gym. Regardless of the weight that you're lifting or like who you are, they're gonna stop and they're gonna support you because that's just the, the type of people they are and I think that weightlifting in general like played a huge role in the way that they were because it showed me that just being at this gym being around these people showed me what weightlifting really means and to me a female weightlifter is somebody that is not going to let society put them in a box they want more for themselves they want more for themselves in their lifts and in their lives and they're never going to play small they're going to be seen they're going to take up space and they're going to spread that self-love among other people. And so just being here showed me like what I wanted to recreate. And it gave me all the inspiration basically to start something very similar at San Diego State because I wanted everyone to be able to experience this. And I knew like there's obviously limitations. Not everyone can come here. I decided I was going to start a female weightlifting club called Girl Gains. And even after like making the flyer and sending out the word and everything, I was still so hesitant about it because I had all of my self-doubt was telling me like, why would I start a female weightlifting club when I physically never really like looked the most muscular? Like I just always had that imposter syndrome following me around. I was like, I don't feel like I'm qualified enough to be like start a female weightlifting club and also I didn't feel like I was qualified enough to be the president of a club in general because I had no leadership experience whatsoever and I was always like you know the last to volunteer for things just like super low-key and never put myself out there 
So this was very, very out of character for me, but I think that weightlifting gave me that confidence.